are in a turning point with our power system in history because we have decided to decarbonize our energy system. It's a, a very complex system. It's extremely important. Virtually every aspect of our life depends on it nowadays. We are electrifying now the last remaining parts of our society, which is transport and uh, industry and heating. They were up to now still running on gas, basically. But this changes now. And then everything from banking to telecommunication, health, everything depends on electricity. And the requirements that an engineer gets in designing the elements and the system as a whole are tremendously fascinating. If you, if you have a bit of insight into the drivers behind climate change, we are so late already. We should have started that in the 50s probably already to decarbonize our energy and transport sectors and um, it's high time and we need everybody who can contribute to it. As an engineer I have of course um, lots of options to, to help and uh, I want to make myself useful. My name is Peter Palensky. I'm a professor at TU Delft. My chair is called Intelligent Electrical Power Grids, which is basically power engineering in the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Mathematics. The title of my chair already shows that this is a new generation of power engineering. So we deal with uh, smart grids, with uh, lots of digital replicas and twins and simulations, with distributed energy systems and with renewable energy. And for that we need intelligent electrical power grids. This is a caloric power plant, in this case coal-fired, and uh, that was the backbone of our electricity system for the last 150 years. The advantage of uh, these caloric power stations is the reliability. You switch them on and they run. You can control them as you like. And, and that's a detail, but a very important detail, they are stabilizing the power system. And that was the reason why the lights didn't go out. And they are great, they just have one downside. Huh? The emissions by burning fossil fuels uh, are just not acceptable anymore. We have to completely decarbonize our energy sector by using renewables that don't emit anything and uh, this is our big job now, to, to master this transition. And that's always difficult because the system as it is now is extremely optimized. Yeah? <laughs> it's, it's fine as it is. Yeah? And you change one aspect and you question all the others. So we turn everything upside down now and we have to change a lot. So in the past, we had a handful of big power stations and they were centralized. They were then distributing the electricity um, into the country. It's like a tree, yeah, hierarchical. And at the leaves of the tree were the consumers, you and me, factories and so forth. In the future, this will be more like a decentralized uh, mesh of things. So we will not have 20 big power stations anymore. We will have 20 million hmm, small ones also big ones, mixed, and the infrastructure have to catch up uh, with, with that. And uh, we need a, a flexible system that can cope with the fact that energy goes back and forth, is stored here and there, and we need a much more flexible energy infrastructure. Well, this is one of the future energy sources. Huh? The nice thing about solar is it's idiot-proof. It's just panels that you screw here on a field, 
connect the inverters and that's basically it. Uh, there are no moving parts, um, they age very slowly, so maybe after 10 years you can replace them with better ones, so that's, that's fine. Uh, but they are not dangerous, uh, they don't make any noise, uh, so solar is really the future. Connecting a new wind farm and connecting a new solar farm is not a trivial thing. It changes the physics, the dynamics uh, of the entire system and uh, this is a very delicate uh, exercise. So the moment you, you connect such solar fields and wind and loads and everything else with a more or less smart uh, energy grid, you create a, a large cyber physical system. This is a very complex thing. It has uh, properties that are not obvious, that are not visible at first sight. You can also not calculate it on the back of an envelope anymore. Huh? The old grid was almost that simple, almost. Yeah? Um, there were physical equations that you can solve and uh, that was it. But the new one has lots of digital aspects and physical aspects and they are interacting. So we need new methods to um, design them, to optimize them, uh, to analyze things when phenomena happen, to extend it over the years, and to make the controls and to make it resilient and, and reliable and efficient. And uh, the digital twin that we are creating is one of them. We are building a digital twin of the national power system, which uh, serves as a virtual laboratory in the end. So basically it's a simulation model, but it also has an interface to reality. So you can run that model and it can interact with the reality. This interaction can be in a different nature. It can get um, a data feed in so that it replicates what is out there. So this would be really a twin. For instance, you have a factory or a power station and your twin would do exactly what, what's happening out there. And the moment it deviates, you would see there is something wrong because the twin didn't break, but something out there was just broken. So that's one of the applications of uh, anomaly detection in, in, in factories or other, other settings. It runs autonomously. It can be synchronized with reality, so it would imitate and mimic what is out there, and you could look at the details, even things that you cannot measure out there, or you can also fo fast forward it to the future. You can clone it, you can have 20 twins, and, and send them in fast forward into the future, into alternative futures, and explore what would happen in this or that situation. This is the power that a digital twin would give you. It gives you a tool, it's nothing more than that, it's a tool, that helps you with very complex systems that you cannot understand anymore and that you cannot calculate with paper and pencil anymore. And uh, what we are currently up to is make a digital twin of the Dutch electricity system to a pretty good detail. And for that, we are heavily investing into, into computer hardware and into people that uh, derive these models. This is the place where everything comes together. It's the ESP lab, the Electric Sustainable Power Laboratory of TU Delft, and everything is present here for research, for investigations. We have renewable generation, we have uh, smart grids, we have power electronics, innovative high voltage materials. So we brought all these things together under one roof uh, for our students, for our research, um, to, to make the energy system of the future reality. And we see with our students, when they enter the university and you ask them why they are here, they have a mission. Yeah? They want to improve the world. They want to make it better. So this, this spirit is uh, extremely motivating. And we have to give them the tools, the knowledge, and uh, everything else they need uh, to make that happen. That's not that easy. 
But now with this laboratory, we can do this. Uh, we can simulate the future in our supercomputers. We can hook up real devices, photovoltaic, wind, and uh, do experiments there. Uh, hundreds of thousands of times, if, if needed, uh, we can script these things. And the moment we understand everything, the moment we have fixed all, everything, we can roll it out in reality. So this laboratory speeds up the energy transformation. If we do it on the live patient, we would be very, very careful, very slow. It would not be as fast as we need it. We have to decarbonize much faster, and this laboratory makes it possible. I hope the ESP lab will be the birthplace of the power system of the future. New components that are incredibly robust and idiot-proof that everybody can install it on this planet, that they are self-organizing, that we can roll them out everywhere, and they will be renewable and clean and safe and reliable. For that, we need lots of innovation in the materials, in the topologies, in the controls, in the algorithms, in, in, in almost everything. Yeah? Now a power system needs to be done by experts. It's dangerous. It's very peculiar. You have to take care of it that it doesn't collapse. We have to fix that. <laughs> that has to be different in the future. It must be easy, safe, clean, affordable for everybody. We as scientists, we see it's solvable. Yeah? We just have to do it. And uh, this laboratory is our contribution to that fight, to that journey. And I'm very happy to, to be working here uh, on the solution every day. Yeah.